Hello, my name is Peter McAllister and I'm a paediatric reg and today alongside my colleague Carol McCarthy we're going to demonstrate how to gain IO access in a child. The objectives that we're going to get through today include the background of IO access, some indications and contraindications to IO access, complications associated with IO access, choosing your site depending on the patient, the equipment required, the technique involved and then care associated with the procedure after performed. Just a little bit of background on IO access. There is a lot of stigma associated with IO access and fear in terms of using it in a child. However, it is an effective and alternative method to allow for fluid resuscitation, drug administration, especially in an emergency situation. You can deliver all fluids, medicines and blood products through IO access, apart from TPN and chemotherapy. However, in an emergency situation, you will be able to deliver essentially all that you need. Unfortunately, there are limited investigations that you can gain from IO access, and these generally involve a blood sugar and blood cultures. However, it is rapidly accessible within most emergency departments and is a very easy alternative method to gain intravascular access in a child in various clinical situations. Just to talk through some indications and when you should consider using IO access. Cardiac arrest is probably the most common situation in which you would use IO access in a child. Peri-arrest situations where the child is extremely unwell and delay in IV access would delay um, the child getting appropriate care. Shock where again there is delay in getting IV access. Sepsis refractory seizures where there is no IV access and IV medication is required and also when there has been unsuccessful IV access uh, on a numerous number of occasions and IV access is required in order to help the patient and give them appropriate management. Contraindications to IO access include proximal fractures, a vascular injury on the same side, if there is any bone illness or abnormality such as osteogenesis imperfecta or osteomyelitis, these need to be considered in terms of gaining IO access. An overlying skin infection such as cellulitis would also be a contraindication to gaining IO access and failed IO attempts at that location on the ipsilateral limb or side would also be a contraindication. Complications associated with IO access the most common um, complication that happens is an extravasation injury where the IO needle either becomes dislodged or is in the wrong area and fluids, medications or blood products are entered into the wrong area. Subperiostal infusion, again where the needle isn't in the correct space. Dermal abrasion where there is damage to the skin either from the, the needle itself or from the plastic hub. Compartment syndrome is a rare um, and uncommon complication, but it's also something that needs to be considered, causing a fracture as well as introducing infection and causing osteomyelitis would be another complication. Okay, so now we're going to talk about choosing your site for IO access. This will depend on the clinical situation as well as the size and the age of the child. The most used site is the proximal tibia, and this is a site that is taught on courses such as APLS. However, there are other sites that you can consider, such as the distal tibia, the distal femur, and the humeral head. There does need to be a little bit of flexibility in terms of your choice of these different sites, but this will be patient dependent and dependent on the clinical situation. I would like to highlight that the easy IO that we will demonstrate later should not be used for the sternum, and this is highlighted very clearly on the packaging. A little bit more information as to your landmarks for these different sites is demonstrated on the slide and again there needs to be a little bit of flexibility with regards to these as these rules are not hard and fast and are patient dependent. Just going to discuss the equipment that is required for IO access. So first and foremost you need your IO needle and we're mainly going to discuss using the easy IO drill as this is the most commonly used 
um, piece of equipment for gaining IO access now. There are three different needles that are available to you. The pink needle, which is used in patients that are less than 3.5 kilos. The blue needle, which is used in patients between 3.5 and 40 kilos. And the yellow needle, which is used in patients in greater than 40 kilos. You'll need your easy IO drill also. You'll need skin preparation such as a chlorhexidine alcohol wipe. You'll need your IO dressing, an IO giving set, syringes and a flush as well. You may also need a bandage just to give some protection to the site where the IO is. As mentioned before, there are limited investigations that you can get from gaining IO access and once you get your sample back when you get your IO needle in place. You can measure a blood sugar using a bedside glucometer. You can send a sample for blood culture. However, most other laboratory tests are limited and will be dependent on the laboratory that is closest and available to you. Just want to discuss post-procedure care. Once you gain your IO access, you want to remove your IO needle as soon as feasible as it will reduce the likelihood of complications. IO access needs to be removed within 24 hours again to reduce the likelihood of complications. The area of IO insertion should be covered again to reduce the likelihood of complications. And when you're trying to remove your IO needle, you should use a lure locked syringe. And we will demonstrate this after. So now we're going to hand over to Kyle McCarthy, an APNP in the Children's Hospital, who will demonstrate IO access in children. We are going to demonstrate using the easy IO drill and we will demonstrate in the area of the proximal tibia. So this is a demonstration of how to do an IO insertion in a paediatric patient. For the purposes of this video we are going to do a proximal tib as this is the most common site to be used in children often because we use it in emergencies and the lower limbs tend to be freed up as people do a lot of work around the head of the bed, at airway etc. For your IO you will need to make sure that you have the gun. Always check that the gun works before using it. The batteries in the guns are not replaceable so if the gun is not working um, you have to buy a whole new set. Don't routinely test the gun but always check it just before use. We have, in, for the Easy I.O., we have a kit and they look like this. In your kit, you will have an extension set, dressing, your I.O. needle and you will also have a pink label, which we will show at the end and there's also a small sharps box. Okay. You will see on the Easy I.O. packaging there's a clear sign that none of these needles are to be used for external I.O. The colours that we keep in the children's hospital are pink needles, blue needles and our yellow needles and the size will depend on your patient. The weights of which needle um, should be used is on the packaging so if you can't remember what, what age or what weight is for which needle always check the back of your package. Once you have decided that your patient needs an IO and you're ready to go, um, you need someone to come and assist you and to hold the limb. Always ensure that whoever is helping you holds the limb like this and that they don't hold under the limb. If you start to drill and the patient moves or something happens and the limb moves, you are at risk of perhaps um, hurting your helper. So never hold under the limb. So this is a good position for your proximal tip. Once your site is, cho is chosen, you just clean your site, okay, and then you want to locate where you go for your needle. So you're feeling for the little notch below, below the knee, and you're going about one finger breadth below that on the medial aspect. So always think IO big toe, you want it to line up on this line. This is magnetic and attaches straight on. There's no screwing or winding to be done. And then the end just comes off. Feel for your side again and check your position. Okay. The key thing is to pierce the skin first and then you're going to drill until you get a give. <coughs> T 
take off your drill and then you're going to remove your inner stylet. Once this is done, you can attach your syringe and take off a marrow sample. You will only get approximately half a mil and sometimes you won't get anything. This isn't a sign that it isn't in the right place, um, but just be careful when you start to infuse. Once you take off your sample, always apply your dressing first. make sure that your IO is nice and secure and also because you can't apply your connection after this is done. Add your connection which has been pre-flushed and then you're ready to give all of your medications through your IO. As you can see this is really stable with your dressing. Okay. Always keep an eye after your IO is put in. Although this is really stable and we're happy it's in the right place it can very easily become dislodged so just keep an eye is there any swelling around the calf or any areas that's a sign it's dislodged? To remove your I.O., the first thing you want to do is take off any connector. Take off your clear dressing by loosening the sides and this will clearly and easily lift off. To remove an I.O., make sure you have a good sized lure lock syringe. I generally would advise a 20ml or even a 50ml but something just to get a good grip and make sure it is a lure lock and not a tipped syringe. Attach your lure lock syringe and then hold your limb and you're just doing a quick pull to dislodge it and it comes out. You can put a little dressing over the site but generally it's okay to leave like this. In your pack as mentioned before there is a little pink um, sheet and this can be either put on after you remove the IO or if someone has remembered to do it you can put it on after the IO is inserted to let people know the date and time that it has been done. This can also be used if there has been failed attempts in other limbs so that people are aware that that limb cannot be used for 48 hours. Your needle is discarded as any other needle in the sharps box and then we would advise that you just keep an eye on the limb just to make sure there's no evidence of any compartment syndrome and also to make sure that the patient is moving the limb. If there's any concerns about the patient's limb, that they're not moving, it's very painful, they may require further assessment and potentially an x-ray. But if the patient moves the limb and there's no problems, then there's no indications for x-ray and to check the bone or anything afterwards. Many thanks to Carol for giving that excellent demonstration on how to gain I.O. access in a child. So just to go back through our objectives of this demonstration about I.O. access. So we've discussed the background of I.O. access, the indications and contraindications, some complications, how to choose your site and where you place your I.O. needle, the equipment required for the procedure, the technique required for the procedure and then care after you've gained I.O. access. Okay, so just in summary, IO access is a rapid, effective, alternative method for vascular access in a child in a number of very limited clinical settings, and you need to know when to use IO access and when it is appropriate. There are a variety of needles, and these are age and weight dependent, and you need to familiarize yourself with these, and as demonstrated, know when to move up or move down in your IO needle. Stick to the sites that you're familiar and comfortable with and don't go too rogue in terms of where you place your I.O. needle. Complications can and do occur and watch for the signs as Carol mentioned earlier and remove your I.O. needle as soon as you possibly can when it's safe for your patient. These are some references um, for this procedure and thank you very much for watching um, as this video that is part of the DVAC course.